Hi there. Welcome to Sunnyside Journals. I'm Catherine. I have a little visit and uh, sort of a what's on my desk. I've still got more work to do in uh, I'm, I'm working on Mr. Rogers and Henrietta meets someone new. So you're going to find, because I already got most of it done, I have been a fussy cutting fiend today. Oh, come on, Sally. Let's get you. There we go. <laughs> I've been fussy cutting to beat the band. So I thought uh, I'm going to put them in to Mr. Rogers. And you know what? I can turn my camera on for that. I hope everyone's having a nice day. I um, It's beautiful and sunny where I am. It is cool, which I'm happy with. I will take sunshine and cool anytime. <laughs> over sunshine and hot. I, I'm not a, I'm not a heat worshiper. I am a sun worshiper, although I don't lay out in the sun. I like to sit in the shade and look at the sun. I've said that before, but, um, yeah. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I've been making lots and lots of tags to go in to Mr. Rogers. And I, I started making some new, um, reinforcements in different colors and then I thought you know what maybe some of you um, would like to know a quick and easy way you probably already know it but if you don't and you're new here I'm going to do it because it's real quick um, usually reinforcements come in white now you'll find on old old retro things that you find at thrift stores they've got uh, usually sort of a brown color the reinforcements which I like. But then I discovered I also like different colors of reinforcements. And there's just a really easy way to do that. Actually, though, I have used a lot of white ones. You're going to see when we get into Mr. Rogers there. Um, I've used a lot of white ones in this one. But there's a really quick and easy way to uh, make your make your white reinforcements any color you want. It just depends on what ink pad you have. So, like, for instance, these, that's my red archival ink pad. This one is, I think that's a blend of, I think that's a blend of my antique linen and then a tiny little bit of my mocha archival ink pad. This one is gathered twigs. And now I need some vintage photo. So I thought before I'd make my vintage photo um, reinforcements, I'll show you how I do it. So it's just um, Distress Ink. I'm sorry for that big blop. That's usually where I rest my makeup sponge on the top when I've got it closed. Uh, but it is uh, the Vintage Photo, just the Distress Ink. I'm sure the oxides would work as well. Uh, so then I, I just get myself a piece of paper and I get a little uh, sheet of reinforcements. I find these all the time at my thrift stores, but if you're not a thrifter, uh, you, you'll find them at dollar stores or at Staples or any kind of business center. Let me move Mr. Rogers over a little bit. Um, and you just take your sheet of reinforcements and take your pad of distress ink or any other ink. Like, as I said, I made one with mocha ink and I just used this uh, ink pad when I did the mocha one. Flip it over and just color your reinforcements. And boom! You've got nice, nice brown, rich brown reinforcements. Ta-da! How quick was that? Fast and easy. Now, here's a little trick that I do, as I've learned the hard way. <laughs> Get a Kleenex or a paper towel or anything like this. The paper that these reinforcements are stuck to it's um, that slippy paper, like wax paper, because so that you can peel it off because they're sticky, of course. So I find I just go in uh, because that ink will stay active. The ink on the reinforcements, that stays fine. That, those will stay brown. But um, if you pick up this sheet later, even I find a week later, because that's been treated to be slippy, um, the ink will stay active for a long time and you'll get it, well, as I have here, from holding it just down for a few minutes, you'll get ink on your hands. So just give it a wipe and it eventually, um, it gives up 
and it just stays so then you just have your sheet of um, vintage photo color of reinforcements see and then you're done you're good to go quick and easy so um yeah so let's get started uh let's put that over so as i said i've been fussy cutting and i want to do a little bit more work in uh in mr rogers here um you know what i'm gonna get some more wipes and clean that ink off my hands before i start going in i'm really loving the bold crisp colors that this um that this uh journal has and i want them to stay that way so i don't want vintage photo uh smudges on it there we go i think that's good i'm gonna wipe these on my lap here <laughs> and we should be good to go Alrighty, so here uh here i can show you remember i said i've been using some white on them so i've been going tag crazy i've just been having fun with my tag punch and i just so cute and i'm so happy with it now um oh i get it i've got this little angel that's going to go right there all righty so let's get uh let's get some art glitter glue and put this cute little baby onto her new spot I've been so enjoying doing this uh, journal as I mentioned previously it's been so long since I've done a little golden book junk journal and I have never done a little golden book junk journal with a curved hidden hollow back spine. This is a first for me. And it was a challenge, but I enjoyed it very much and I will definitely do it again. I might do it for some Christmas journals. Let's move you over. There we go. I might do it for some Christmas journals. I want to make sure I got you at the correct angle, you little sweetie. There we go cute i'm not inking these i like that little white edge just the way it is cute. just to save myself time because i'm notorious for running out of time I have already placed the fussy cuts on the pages, so as we go through it, you'll find my fussy cut choices. There we go. So I've got Dick and Jane here. And Jane is going to go on a tag, and Dick is going to go... Actually, I think that's Sally. That's not Jane. Um, Dick, Dick is going to go on the page. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so it was tricky creating a hidden hollow back for a little golden book, but not uh, not impossible. Usually, I will do um, the fun and charming way of just doing a flat, you know, two inch proximate spine that's just flat and you can put buttons on them and, and they're cute. Uh, really, really charming. And certainly I'm not going to do a tutorial on that because so many others have done it so well. Um, seriously, you just have to uh, do a search for Gail Gostinelli, do a search for um, Lori Burkholder uh, at Grammy's Keepsakes. She does beautiful little golden book journals with the flat, the, the flat spine. 
Um, so yeah, but maybe one day I'll do the how I did my my hidden my hidden hollowback spine on a little golden journal. Um, I just mostly did it by guess and by golly. I I actually pulled apart an, a book I have that I had no intention of ever using to see how the publisher did it. Hold on, I've still got it here. I had this book. It's actually a second uh, chapter in the life of the Von Trapp family when they were living in the U.S. and they bought a, they actually bought a farm uh, up in Vermont, Maple Farm Ski Lodge and such. So I took apart a book and just basically looked at how they did it, and and I did it. So how's that for being an autodidact? Now I want red on Sally's little tag here. So I find tweezers help when you're going to put reinforcements down somewhere. Oh, that looks cute. So you can see how, depending on what ink pad colors you have, and I certainly have more, I could make all kinds of colors when I think about it. I've got turquoise, I've got green, I've got, this is sort of a fuchsia color. What do they call it? Seedless preserves. And then I've got a, a bright red fire brick. So there's lots of different, uh, any, it's limitless. It's limited by what color ink pads you have. Where are you, Sally? Let's put you on. For fussy cutting, if I'm not doing uh, using my aerosol glue method, which is a nice, quick, easy way, um, and I would have done that if I hadn't turned my camera on, but to do the aerosol method would have required me turning this camera off and on because it's um, my box that I use to make sure I don't get glue all over my room is on the other side of my room. There we go, Sally, you got a new home. I haven't put strings on all of these tags yet. I'm not sure whether I will or not. I may just, when when the book goes to its new home, I may just send a bundle of ribbons and the new owner can decide what color ribbons they want to put on their tags. Now, I want to use... Hold on, I'm reaching for something over here in case you're wondering, what's that noise? And, oh, sorry. I've got to reach this. I just want some colored... Some colored paper clips because I don't know if you have picked up on it yet but there's a lot of rainbow colors that I'm using in this junk journal and I'm doing that on purpose <laughs> alright let's use so I'm using a blue thrift store. You'll find these all the time at thrift stores. People are always cleaning out their desks. There we go. Get you out of the way. So that looks cute. Let's see what's next. Ah. This is an illustration from a book I have. Uh, a Canadian author, um, Ruth Ohai, author illustrator, Ruth Ohai. I can't find the book right now. It's called Yancey and Bear. It's a cute story. And Ruth Ohai um, illustrates a lot of her, a lot of her children's books are racially diverse characters. So I really enjoy Ruth Ohai's work very, very much. And she was a very good teacher. I enjoyed her class that I took with her. Um, very much. 
She's one of those lucky ducks. She was explaining in the class that uh, the very first time she emailed, emailed, mailed, snail mailed, because this was back in the day, sna snail mailed some of her illustrations, uh, samples to a publisher. She got snapped up and got a book deal. She, she said, no kidding. She said, I wish I could tell you that I, that I had, uh, that I pounded the pavement and and uh, it took years and years before I got a contract, she says, and I got snapped up right away. And it's no wonder. Her illustrations are delightful. All right, so let's put Yancey and Bear right here. That little fellow is just waking up. Cute. I like the green sleepers and the green black background and the blue with this blue showing through. I think that looks nice. Hang on. Where did I put my next one? It's not there. Where are you? Oh, it's here. <laughs> All right. So this one is Eloise Wilkin. Cute little boy. Put him there. I think he's Timmy. I think he's Timmy. It's a big one. Art glitter glue. The little... The skinny little tip um, sure makes gluing around the edges of fussy cuts a whole lot easier. I suppose a glue stick would be easy too, but sometimes I'm a little too vigorous when I'm glue sticking and I can fold over those fingertips or the whole arm in my attempts to get the glue onto everywhere. So. I just find art glitter glue. Go around the edge, put a little bit in the center, and you'll be good to go. Art glitter glue will hold it in place, but make sure it's where you want it because um, there's no going back. There's no peeling it off. Sorry, my arm's in the way. There we go. And Timmy, you're in your new home. X the owl. This one. And this brother and sister are going to go right here. You might find this interesting. Um, this is from a new Dick and Jane. Dick and Jane, fun where we are. This is new. It's a reprint and a re-editing and a re-illustrating of the old Dick and Jane. So this is 19, originally 1965, and this one was redone in 1993. I do have, oh, where are you? Look what I've got. I've got an original, the real deal, fun with Dick and Jane, the one we all hear about. From the 19, this is 1946, and uh, it smells great. But you'll notice in the original Dick and Jane, those children are all white. So what a nice thing when they revised the Dick and Jane stories because they're beloved. Um, that they made that the illustrators. Um, it more racially inclusive and diverse and wonderful. Let's put these, put these two into Mr. Rogers. I think Mr. Rogers would very much like, like that. So mostly go around the edge and then do a few little swirls. You'll be good to go. This won't, uh, this won't be going anywhere.
nice. Oh, I've got another Sally here. Let's put you in Sally. Baby Sally. And her in behind. She looks cute. Right there. Now you know what? I think I'm going to sneeze. So if I sneeze, I apologize. Sometimes they can sneak up on me. <coughs> Pardon me. See what I mean? <laughs> there we go. Sally, you're in your new home. You might recognize this illustration. This is from one of my favorite stories since I was a child. Uh, Corduroy. The story of Corduroy the bear and the little girl Lisa who fell in love with him even though he looked a little ragged and tattered and was missing a button. So Corduroy is going in this book. This book was... Uh, this book changed things in the world. It was published in 1968. That was the same year Martin Luther King was assassinated and uh, I was reading an article by the uh, author Don Freeman and how he purposefully just wrote a book about a little girl and a little bear and how he purposefully did not want to address her race because he just wanted this book to be a story and a little girl and uh yeah and it was quite um well award-winning right off the bat and embraced because it's a beautiful story it's about about love and finding a new home there we go there's lisa there's lisa and corduroy they're in the book now um here's some new little tags in where home is where your heart is i thought this was a good one to have corduroy because he was uh he was hoping to find a home and he found one with lisa oh here's one let's put this one in this is an eloise wilkin illustration and you might notice <laughs> i was prepared for today because i have a little interesting fact about eloise wilkin books that you may or may not know so i'm not presuming that you don't know, but you might not know. Louise Wilkin, when, uh, when she first did so many of her beloved books uh, that are so popular even today, um, all the children in the books were white. And then she had the opportunity in the 1970s and opted to change and make her books racially diverse. So for example, let me show you. Here's her famous one, Prayers for Children. This is the one most of us recognize. This is the newer version. This is the old one. I have a copy of the old Prayers for Children and it's so pretty and the illustrations are so beautiful. Um, but I'll take you right to the back page and you'll see in the old one, this beautiful little baby little blonde haired baby girl sleeping evening prayer and if i take you to the evening prayer in the new inclusive version there's a beautiful little black baby asleep for evening prayer and she added uh, other children of color into um, this version which I just, I knew I loved her, but I loved her even more when I found out about that. And I actually happened to notice it uh, when I was going through the book and I noticed the difference that she did. Do you see? Isn't she wonderful? I love her even more now. Absolutely love her even more. So, and you'll notice that in a few too. There's another book that she did. Um, I think it's a child's book of God. I've got some pictures in here um, where she uh, had the option of um, of when it was going to be up for republishing that she opted to um, 
put in some new illustrations that were, were more diverse and more um, illustrated a better look of the uh, wonderful rainbow colors of our world now, of the people in our world. So, and hence my reason for doing this Mr. Rogers book, because first of all, I think the world needs a little bit more Mr. Rogers right now. I always think of him when I'm worried about something going on in the world and Mr. Rogers says, advise children, look for the helpers. Whenever you're scared, look for the helpers. There's always helpers around in difficult times. And I decided maybe I need to be a helper. Um, I actually had a really, um, really unpleasant private message last week. I posted a picture of my little bulletin board that I have on my wall here where I give myself uplifting little uh, quotes and messages or sayings. I change my board up once in a while. And so I changed my board to say Black Lives Matters. And I actually had someone privately message me to let me know that they were unfollowing me because of that. And it really was, um, it hit me like a kick in the gut. That, uh, now hold on, wait a And I thought, here I am sitting here from my place of privilege as a white woman in a very, uh, very comfortable country, very blessed. And I thought, what can I do more? What can I do more? And I love Mary Englebright. I don't know if any of you follow Mary Englebright, the artist. She does all those uh, fabulous, fabulous uh, works with the children and the girls wearing glasses and and her flowers. I love her flowers. And, and her life is just a, bo a chair of bowlies sort of thing. Anyhow, she's uh, she is giving a lot of digital prints free right now as her way of giving back not only for black lives matters but for pride june is pride month and so i thought how can i give back i'm certainly not mary Engelbright, <laughs> but i'm an artist there must be ways i can give back so i have decided i knew i had this book from mr rogers and i have decided that um this book will probably be available for sale tomorrow in my Etsy shop. So today is Saturday, June something or other. And so I suspect I'll be ready. It'll be ready by tomorrow. So it'll probably be, you'll know, I'll make an, I'll post something on Instagram and, and I'll post a flip through here. Um, and I am going to give uh, all of the proceeds from the sale of this book Half of the proceeds are going to go to blacklivesmatters.ca and the other half is going to the Durham chapter of PFLAG, which is the support organization in my area for the LGBTQ plus community. And I figured that's my way to give back, at least start to try and give back and try to help make this world a little bit better make changes for the good so this book let's find out oh, look, look at those babies aren't they cute this is katie mcdonald danton she's another canadian illustrator that i love and she does racially diverse characters in her books um so yeah so this this beautiful i've i've only used what i've got so i apologize if there's someone i've missed or an aspect i have missed I am from the bottom of my heart. Apologize. I've used what I've got in my studio and searched high and low. Um, and I will try to do better next time if I have uh, uh, overlooked something. But for the time being, this happy little book full of bright rainbowy colors, full of people of bright colors, uh, will be available in my Etsy shop. for sale and the proceeds are going to go to two I believe good causes let's 
Let's see, babies. You go right there, babies. Oh, look how cute. Isn't that pretty? This is one of the Eloise Welcome illustrations from a child's book about God, I believe. Uh, my little golden book about God. Yeah. Oh, there goes my timer. I ran out of time. Well, this one's going here. So, and I think I have maybe two more. You'll see when I do the flip through. I'll be posting a flip through, hopefully tomorrow. Let me turn that thing off. Oh, now I can't find my phone. Hold on. Dismiss. Ah, so today's Saturday, June 13th. Most likely, most likely, um, this book will be for sale in my Etsy shop uh, at some point tomorrow. I'm not sure when. Like I said, I'll post a video and I'll post a notice on my Instagram. Thanks for visiting with me today. Thanks for putting up with my roundabout way of explaining why I'm making this book, how I got to this book. I got to deciding uh, what to make this book and what I was going to do with the proceeds from it. And I hope everyone is safe. I hope you're healthy and, uh, and that you're having a, a good weekend. Take care, everyone. We'll talk soon. Bye.